Dan Abbott, I'm making this video for my AEDD 250 class at Southern Maine Community College. And this was the um, first angle fair and angle projection exercise. And I wanted to show you how you might create this in SolidWorks, since a number of you use SolidWorks, and some of you very cleverly created this model correctly, but some of you didn't, and the reason is because it requires that you do a loft in order to do it, and I think you just weren't clear on how to approach it. One thing I want to emphasize in this class is that the result of your projects has to be correct. And if you're using SolidWorks or AutoCAD or anything else, that's fine. But you still need to make sure that what you do is correct. So here's a case where if you weren't sure how to make this solid model, you should have sketched it. But I'm going to also make sure that if you do want to understand how to make something in SolidWorks or AutoCAD or whatever, feel free to ask. And particularly in my open session, I'd be happy to show you how to do it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create this, this uh, part, at least one method. Um, there are a number of ways you could do this. Some of them could get kind of complicated. But what I'm going to do is create that triangular shape first, which is quite simple. And then I'm going to put some reference lines in so that I know where that 50 millimeter dimension is. And you notice it comes down across from that point, but the top is at a different height back where it intersects that slope than it is at the beginning. So it starts out at a 40 millimeter height and it ends up at a 50. So that edge right there, that slopes up until it intersects that angled surface. So let's build it. I'm going to move this aside and go over to SolidWorks. All right, so this is what the part looks like. And just to show you where I'm headed before we get to the that point, if I roll this back to my boss extrude, that part's easy. Just draw the triangle, you extrude it, do a mid-plane extrusion because it is symmetrical. So I want the origin here. Probably actually I would have made that origin at the back would have made more sense, but I didn't. So um, at any rate, that's where that goes. Then I needed to put a plane in, and that plane is the front of that protrusion, that part that sticks out. If take a look at how that plane was designed. It was based on the back surface, and then I gave a distance, and that distance was 10 millimeters. Uh, I'm sorry, it was based on the front plane. The front plane was right at the front edge of this, where the origin is. So I made that come out 10 millimeters, because 10 millimeters is what it indicated in the drawing, that that stuck out. That's the 10 millimeters right there. Now once I got the plane in there, then I went and did a sketch, and this sketch was on the back surface. Let me make sure it's visible. And this sketch right here represents a couple of intersections. You notice those are construction lines. They're center line types. It might be easier to see this if I get rid of the color. Well, actually, it isn't easier. All right, let's just give it a different color. Well, let's color it a lighter blue so you can see it better. Well, not a big improvement, but there's a sketch here and there's a sketch here. Now, if you look at where those two things came from, one of them is the 50. It comes right up here. The other one is that 30. And that just to show me where that intersection is going to be. And you'll see in a minute why I need to know that. So that sketch right there, if I were to edit these sketches, you see the dimensions of that's 30, that's 50. I made them horizontal. I actually made them coincident just because that's why I want to be able to grab them. So those are reference lines, and they're reference lines because I've got a target now. Now I've created a loft, and you see that loft was created from two different things. I'm going to roll this down. Now I'll take a look at this sketch right here. This sketch is on that flat surface, and you notice that surface, because it's at an angle, I had to sketch on that surface, so I selected that. Not the plane, but the, but the surface I'm going to. And I use those targets, that little target right there, to draw another construction line coming across. And then I have a construction line coming down here. So now I have a place I can put those lines. And that's the projected shape against this back wall. Now that's one of the sketches. The other sketch is the one up front, and that one's in the part right there, that surface right there. And so as a result of that, I've got a sketch in the back and I've got a sketch in the front. The key thing then is to loft the two together. And that's what some of you may have overlooked because we only did one lofting exercise in the, um, in the SolidWorks class. So if I were to get out of that sketch, I'm just going to delete that loft right now. 
So the, the loft itself is gone, but the sketches are here. And I want to be able to see them, so let me just make that one visible. So I've got both sketches visible there. And what I need to do now is to go to Features, and under Features, say I want to do not an extrude, but a lofted boss or base. And then I need to pick profiles. Well, I want to just pick these two profiles, just pick them more or less in the same location. You see what it did. Now, when I said more or less, I wasn't good enough at it, so what I ended up with is this kind of twisted loft. I could modify that. I could fool around with these things and say, yeah, let's bring that up here. And when I pull that point up there, what happened before was I was a little closer to that corner than I was to this one when I selected that. And so as a result, it did this, which gave me this twisted loft. So I drag it back up, put it here, and now you can tell that that's what I want. I get on out of here now, and if I look at that from the right-hand side, it looks like that. Looking at it at the front, it looks like this. And if I show that like so, your drawing is going to look this way. 